So, wanted to share this and remind you that some people haven't sent their masks in, but look at this picture closely. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yes. And I, we have so many of us that we may have to have two different, um, two different ones made or three, but this is what they've come up with so far for us. And, uh, so now you're wishing you'd sent your picture in. I'm wishing, <laughs> I'm wishing I sent someone else's picture in. You guys all look awesome. Um, and uh, with that, I'd like to turn the meeting over to our presenter, um, our guest, Marty Coelho, and uh, to talk to us about this, uh, this project. Marty. You're still muted. Hate it when that happens. I know. Thanks, Maggie. Do I have the uh, option to share screen? You bet. Hold on. Okay. You should, you should be able to now. Okay, let's give this a go. Do you see a wear a mask graphic? Okay, it's working. We love it when Zoom works. Not so much when it doesn't. So anyway, my name is Marty Coelho. I am uh, the Executive Director of College Advancement and the CR Foundation for College of the Redwoods. I'm here as a volunteer today for the COVID Economic Resilience Consortium, we call it the CERC. And with me today is Lynette Mullen, who is our project manager, and Greg Foster, who we've labeled our illustrious convener and facilitator. Uh, the CERC is a volunteer group from Humboldt, Del Norte, and Mendocino. Uh, sometimes from Trinity, and uh, there may be other members that are on the call this morning, so welcome. The CERC is comprised of economic development and business support organizations and was established to share updates, coordinate resources, ensure consistent communications to area businesses and to the public at large. I'm here today to ask for your support for a countywide wear a mask campaign that the CERC launched in mid-August. We're asking for your participation as a Rotary Club, as businesses, as community leaders. And later I will identify some actions you can take to help support the campaign. As background, we are currently at a moderate level for COVID. So I'm going to share with you the latest chart. And can everybody see our state? Okay, so we are at a moderate level for COVID. And if you look at the state, there's not many counties at a moderate level. Marty, having said I, that, Marty I'm, sorry to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah, you're it. not sharing your screen anymore. It's not sharing. Okay, one second. Thank you so much. Is it showing now? Now you've got it. All right. Maybe two or three years into this uh, pandemic, I'll have this nailed. I know, pandemic humor is just not that funny. Um, so as you can tell by the state, this is a new, uh, new graph that they're using. There's four levels to it. And this is just put out a couple of weeks ago. We're at a moderate level. And there's not many counties in uh, California at a moderate level. Probably more disturbing is looking below us and seeing how high COVID is now below us. Um, having said we're at a moderate level, uh, we've actually had 482 cases to date. Six people have passed away. Um, the majority of our cases in Humboldt County have come from large friend and family gatherings where folks weren't masking up. And Humboldt folks traveling out of that area and bringing the gift of COVID back home. Uh, we've succeeded to date in keeping COVID under control in Humboldt County through the efforts of our Office of Emergency Services and the public health department who's done just a great job in tracking and tracing folks that potentially have COVID in our county. So this new state map uh, is determined based on two metrics. Uh, the first rate is, uh, the first metric is the case rate or the number of new cases per 100,000 residents based on a seven day average. The second metric is the testing rate or the number of COVID tests coming back positive. 
the county will remain in a tier for a minimum of three weeks before being able to advance or go back. Um, when you look at this and you hear the case count of 482, you have to take it all with a grain of salt. And what do I mean by that? Because the state, the way it tracks COVID cases, is based on your county of residency. So what that means is any people living in Humboldt County that have not declared Humboldt County as their residence, maybe they're here as contract workers, maybe they just don't want to declare that they live here based on the industry that they are part of, um, they don't count if they get COVID. And so recently we had a breakout in Fortuna and some of those folks weren't from Humboldt County. So their tests don't count. So 482 is a little misleading as to how many cases we actually have within our county. And that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the wear a mask campaign is not political. I can't stress that enough. Uh, that never is part of CERT conversations per se. It's designed to encourage the consistent wearing of masks to better protect the health of the community and to slow the spread of COVID. 99.0% of public health organizations internationally have declared wearing a mask is the one of the very best things possible to limit COVID. And they were actually saying the same thing 100 years ago during the Spanish flu. So this just didn't come out of the blue. Our campaign tagline is, please wear a mask. Don't make us ask. Keep Humboldt healthy. And this becomes really critical right now because, folks, winter is coming. And for those of you that aren't Game of Thrones fans, I just feel bad for you. But winter is coming. And in Humboldt, that means the crud is coming. And you have to pause and think about that. I had the Humboldt crud last year. It hung on for two months. It is the sickest I've been in 20 years. I cannot even imagine having the crud and COVID at the same time. I don't think you'll make it. And the sad thing is, all it takes is one person in Humboldt County getting the Humboldt crud, and everybody gets it. So it's really critical at this point between the Humboldt crud and the flu, that we ask everybody to mask up as much as possible. So our basic messaging emphasizes the following things. Humboldt County has an extremely limited medical system, very limited medical resources. Only 27 ICU beds in the county for COVID patients and other emergencies. And on any given day, half of those beds could be filled up. So regardless of the politics in the area, there is not anybody that lives in Humboldt County it's going to sit there, look you in your face, and say, we have a robust medical system, because we don't. The masks need to be worn to keep our businesses open. Masks are pro-business, period. The masks need to be worn so that we have opportunities to send our children back to school in safe environments. Um, I've got four kids. I've got a 13-year-old uh, next door to me here um, uh, struggling to survive in school because he's a social creature who would rather skateboard and play basketball, online learning is killing them. I don't care how good they are at online learning, my son just can't adapt to that. And he's gonna pay a price, guaranteed. So at some point I'd love to be able to get him into a safe environment. And besides wearing a mask, maintain at least six feet of distance from others when in public places, indoors or outside, and regularly wash your hands. And I know probably all of you here are saying, yes, you're not telling us anything we don't know, and I'm here to tell you, you would be shocked, maybe not, the amount of individuals in our county that don't even know these basic things. It's staggering. The campaign is running a social media campaign through Facebook and Instagram, and we'll put those uh, links up into the chat in a little bit. And we're running a very robust PSA campaign uh, where we've provided a small stipend to media partners to really take our PSA campaign and kind of put it on steroids. So currently, Access Humboldt by Coastal Media Humboldt, Eureka Broadcasting, Lost Coast Communications, Mad River Broadcasting, KMUD, Redheaded Black Belt, Redwood News, and the Time Standard have all come on as partners and are trying to blast our messages out every day. And this gets to the point where people are gonna see them and they're gonna get really tired of them and that's about the point when people actually start to notice them. 
In addition to the social media push and the PSA campaign, we're promoting the campaign through partnering with organizations and businesses. So this includes all the businesses, organizations, foundations, and educational institutions that are already involved on the CERC. So we have a lot of folks on our calls three times a week. Donors to our um, campaign have included AEDC, California Center for Rural Policy, Changing Tides, the CR Foundation, the Headwaters Fund, RCRA, RREDC, all of our county's convention bureaus and chamber of commerces, Humboldt State, and more. And our newest partners are Open Door Community Health Centers, St. Joseph Health System, and McKinleyville Middle Schools. We just handed out a ton of our window clings to all of their parents. I tell you all this to show that we're serious about driving this campaign forward. We thought at first it was going to be for at least 90 days. We now recognize the fact that it's going to be significantly longer. But like I said, with winter coming, it's critical that we get as many of our folks wearing masks as often as possible. So what can you do, what can you do to support the campaign? We're asking for a $500 contribution to the campaign to assist in producing materials. So we produce posters, flyers, window cleans, buttons, and stickers. We're producing in English and Spanish. In fact, we're probably going to be finalizing our Spanish campaign this afternoon. And we distribute these materials to businesses, schools, and nonprofits. Your business or organization can declare yourselves as a partner of the Wear a Mask campaign. And in doing so, you can record audio and video PSAs. You can share our social media posts with your associates. And you can hand out our printed materials to the businesses and public. And we can personalize your campaign poster, which I've noticed you guys are already doing with Susan, which is fantastic. Lots of businesses are starting to take advantage of that, and they are by far our most popular posts. So I will go ahead in the chat and post up um, our information. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Great, thank you, Marty. Um, are there any questions that people would like to ask um, um, of, of Marty at this point? Um, yeah, we did um, early on, or it's been a while, we're trying to collect our um, pictures, but I thought it would be fun to have one of, of Rotarians. Sorry, my cat rear end is, upstaging me um but uh and and so i think it's it, you know i think it's a great project and um i think you know we'll we need to look at of of any of our service committees might want to um participate in this so we'll we'll see you know with a donation we'll see about that um any questions or comments hey maggie can i have one other thing um so please Marty had mentioned materials. One of the things that we are distributing in the community, I think you may have mentioned their window clings. Um, so these can go literally in your windows at your business um, or at your home even, um, so your neighbors can see it, um, and in vehicles. And so I am happy um, to figure out a way to get these to you, um, not only individually, but if you have a place of business, um, if you have a place where folks are walking in, you know, just putting these on the counter so people can grab them um, would be a great way to help us. So if you wouldn't mind letting me know, I will put my contact, oh, Marty's already got it in there, contact information in the chat. So if we need to figure out a way to get these to you, please just get in touch. I will do everything we can to get that done. Oops. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Um, I had one when you said that the folks that aren't, this is not their county of residence, so those numbers aren't showing in our, but then they're showing in the county of, I mean, do those numbers get sent to that county? So. Um, yes, so, absolutely. So the total it, state numbers are accurate. It, what doesn't necessarily get reflected in anybody's county is where you're getting COVID. And so and the challenge with that is folks are living here. It really is their home, but they haven't necessarily uh, declared it their home. I will say, add this at, uh, as a last comment. Um, 
this issue has become um, divisive uh, within our community and communities across the United States. And we don't even attempt to try to persuade someone who has a position of not wearing a mask to wear a mask. I'm not sure that's possible, but I would advocate for this. We all have to figure out ways where we can talk to each other about the issue and not get upset with each other. Somehow we've got to hold these conversations and try to foster dialogue once again, even though for both parties, it's uncomfortable and probably really painful. Right. Thank you. It's yeah. It's it's unfortunate that that's where it's come to. But I think um, from a health standpoint, um, you know, it, and 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 if you know, and also simply if if the government has said you know you have to have masks on to go into businesses, and whether you you like it or not, in order to support those businesses, you kind of have to do it. So um, that's that's just. I mean. Yeah. Yes, and unfortunately, our uh, store employees throughout the county still get daily grief for asking people to put masks on. So it is just the new reality, which is which is pretty sad that these frontline workers, often making minimum wage, are the ones catching the most abuse in a given day. Right. Right, and 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 most exposure in a given day as well. So it's very. So if nothing else. Um, be nice to the people who are keeping keeping these cogs, keeping things going. Um, you know, it's it's. I I don't know where any of us would be if they if folks weren't continuing to show up for work. Um, many of us um, have have the luxury of being able to work <clears throat> from home or in a setting that isn't doesn't have a lot of people coming in and out and. Um, uh, you know, I think about it every day how when I get to, my cat gets to interrupt what I'm doing when I work from home and say, you need to play with me. I, I realize how lucky I am that I have that ability to do that. Um, and, and many, many people don't. And again, this gets, you know, some of this gets back to the equity issues. And, you know, when you look at the statistics of who, who is still working, who didn't have a choice, who's getting sick, uh, you know, beyond their percentages in the population. It's just, it's astounding. Um, and, it, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a big issue. So any, any questions, comments? Um, so if I could add Maggie, I'm already getting requests for window clings, which is, Wonderful. Um, so please, even if it occurs to you later, um, you can always ask Maggie for my contact information. Um, happy to get you whatever we can. Um, I will say, I know Marty kind of already did the pitch, um, and I know money's really tight, um, but we're distributing these free of charge. Like uh, the McKeelanville Middle School, we gave them hundreds of them, and they passed them out to every family member. So just if it's possible, if the club's got any money that they may be able to use, um, to support this, it can go strictly to the materials, um, so you know exactly where it's going. Um, so just something, if you wouldn't mind considering that, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, Mike. Ma Maggie, may I make a comment in regards to what Marty was talking about? Information is critical. What I taught my students for many, many years is research the source of your information make sure the information you're getting is a reliable, verifiable source of information, that it's good information. I think that is one of the most critical things that are, is happening in our country right now regarding everything, not just COVID. Thanks. What, Facebook's not a reliable source? What are you trying to tell me? Um, what I'm saying is that if, if, you, I understand. <laughs> I understand. if you get something from Facebook, where did it come from? Right, right, right. You know, is it a recognized, renowned, verifiable, good source of information? Based in science. Exactly. 
Right. Enough said. Very, very important. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much. And I think um, you know our our community our community service committee is still looking for a couple co-chairs, um, and this would be something that that committee could take a look at. So um, I really encourage you if you're um, especially you know if you're if you've been on that committee um, right now it's you know you're not scheduling in-person meetings it's pretty easy to to pull a meeting together and have people talk and so we really need a couple people to co-chair that and and come forward um uh to to get that happening because that money otherwise it's just we're not going to be providing services out of that committee um so it's really important that that folks step forward and um Please, if you're interested in, in helping with that, let Amanda know. Um, she would she would love to have a couple people step forward and work with her and, and get these things moving forward. So, um, putting out the plug. Um, you know, I, John, your comment <laughs> to me privately um, was that about this president? No. Okay. Thank you. Just want to make sure. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, yeah. Claire, do you want to mention talk about that um, documentary? I think that'd be good to share here as well. Yeah. So um, it's on Netflix, and I, I have to confess, I was multitasking and doing work at the same time. <laughs> but it's it's called um, Social Dilemma, and it explains how the algorithms and things work on Facebook and YouTube and how you really become just isolated by your own views and voices because of how, how this algorithm works. And, and several people who have left um, the social media companies are speaking out. It, it's, it, I, it just makes us look at social, um, social media differently. And I think one of the most striking things is the incredible increase in youth suicide that correlates with um, with the increased use of social media. So, you know, social media is not a great way for our kids to um, think the rest of the world is functioning. We only put up what's happy and good and, you know, life is full of all kinds of, of experiences and emotions. So there are some good sides to social media for sure, but it's important to be careful. They also talk about like the addictive quality of it. And I know from my behaviorism classes, when you're getting those likes, you're getting reinforced and you're getting manipulated into posting more things that people will like. So anyway, it, it's pretty eye-opening and um, informative. Yes, yes, um, thank you for that. Yeah, if anybody has time to, well, maybe make the time to watch that, I think that that would be, um, be really, really important. So I really appreciate you guys coming. Um, and I, Marty, are you, you're, yeah, okay. Um, I just, I'm, can you guys see my screen? Yes. So we, in, um, in appreciation of you presenting to us, our club makes a donation. Oh, this is the wrong one. This says a wheelchair foundation. I bet. We are actually making the donation this year to Tri-County um, Independent Living Center um, to support people with disabilities in our local communities. So 